Welcome to our online global self-awakening retreat. This is our day nine. And our last day. And we had an incredible time together. It's been a beautiful journey. I had an incredible time being together in, in this holy, sacred union of the gathering of the monks on the path, the sannyasins, the seekers of the truth coming together with one intention, the intention of total freedom. And... Um, It's the end of this journey together today. Uh, we have many, many other journeys together that we will do. Uh, but today is the last day. So We'll have our academy this coming Wednesday, uh, same time from 10 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. Uh, California time. So those of you who are with us uh, viewing this broadcast, um, wherever you are in the world, you're always welcome to join my academy. It's a free online uh, Academy. It's a. Uh, it's through the Zoom. You want to go to our website, which is Zaratustra TV, and sign up there if you want to be interactive. Otherwise, you can watch it on Facebook, and Instagram. So, that's going to be our our next event for the moment. All right. So, how are we all doing today? Good. Yeah. Happy? Anybody would like to share anything before I start? Miss Amy, how are you today? I'm doing awesome. It's been an incredible journey. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even supposed to be doing this. <laughs> yeah, you were supposed to go on a vacation. Yeah, I was um, originally, I was going to go to New York. And um, it's funny because, you know, these days have been much more in tune. And um, I was like literally just on my way to the, I was on the airport and I went to the gate, missed my flight. And I was just going to change my flight with my sister. And I, I just said, I was just, my, my intuition just told me not to do it. There's something that just pulled me away from, from doing that. And, um, and so I didn't. And then um, and then I got the in, this invite to come here and didn't, didn't plan this and didn't expect to do these many days. And, um, and I just did. And it's been, um, every day has been so incredible and just going deeper and deeper into so much healing and uh, just awareness <laughs> so thank you you're welcome I'm glad you've joined us and thank you universe because you're about to go you're you go to the airport you're about to fly to go to New York City and then something stops you and says yeah. uh-uh you're not going on a vacation actually you're going on a different retreat so, and you end up here. So, uh, that, that. The 5D vacation. <laughs> say that, what's that? The 5D vacation. The 5D vacation. And, yes. and that's the beauty of life when we surrender to the moment. And surrendering 
and the moment, your intuition is a part of this moment and speaks to you and is guiding you. And it's always been doing that. We're just not, we're trained not to pay attention because, I mean, we've been conditioned not to pay attention to our intuitive knowing, which knows everything. And, and in your case, a Amy's case, you just surrender to that. And even though there is no logical explanation in the last moment not getting an airplane and flying on a vacation, going to New York City to go on a vacation, and a paid vacation, because from what I remember you told me everything was paid. And then it's like, no, doesn't feel right. And coming back home and not knowing, okay, what am I going to do for the whole week or 10 days? But then all of a sudden, this presents itself. And you find yourself here. And, uh, and you receive whatever you've received that, according to you, it's been a there's been a lot of value to it. So... And what, what's interesting is because this happens to us all the time in life and we just don't pay attention to it. Maybe sometimes we do, but most of the time we don't pay attention that our lives are guided and is full of miracles. Just the sheer being here of being alive and that is a miracle by itself. And in the recognition of just being here, being present, surrendering to this moment, then space opens up and things begin to unfold and reveal themselves versus this other aspect of us that I have to know. I have to know everything. I got to know what I'm doing, where I'm going. Um, this constant... Uh, demand of the mind that it feels like it's in control this idea of me of being in control of my life which is simply an idea it doesn't even exist and in this giving into it and believing it suffering comes because Many, many times in life, things going the direction they want to go and means things are going to happen not according to my idea of that something has to happen in this way. So things happen. Life is. And it does its own thing. And when we do recognize that, then no matter what happens, there's a surrender and acceptance in it, that you're accepting what is, what unfolds, whether it's preferable or not, but you're surrendered to it and you're accepting what is. And when we don't notice that and we don't live like that, then suffering comes because things must be my way. Everything has to go this way, my way. That's the idea of what I have. And when it doesn't go that way, naturally suffering happens. Suffering happens to an idea of a person who believes is in control of his or her own destiny. That's an idea too. The I thought, I am someone separated from the source. I am separated from everything else. I am powerful. I'm the author of my own life. I'm the one who dictates and creates my own destiny it's me i'm powerful look at me and when i accomplish things that they go my my way and i've accomplished them then you know i pat myself on the shoulder and saying that 
Oh yeah, look at me, look at me, I did it. But completely fail to look at the parts that when things don't go my way, I fail to see that, that there is something else bigger than me doing things. So I ignore it. Just look at the parts that things going my way. That's the only part that I focus on. But when you fall back inside yourself and you go deep, and you know you are, but you're really not anything. Like in this moment, you can examine it for yourself. Close your eyes and without touching your body, Try to locate your body. Without touching your legs or arms. There is sensations. You, you have sensations. But the body disappears. If you pay attention, you do it a few times. You're here, you're quiet, you're not engaged with anything. You will have, you will experience sensations of the body, but if you don't open your eyes, where is the body? And where are you? Where are you located in this body? Majority of people, when I ask them that question, they're referring to their head. As if they are located in their head. That's where they are. But is that really where you're at? Where is your location? The you, real you, that is hearing me right now. Where is your seat? Seat, where are you? Are you in the heart area? Are you in your legs area? Are you in your stomach? Are you in your head? Where is your real location? Where is, what's your address? can come back so if you're just quiet and you check things out there's not even a body there It's just space. There's presence, there's awareness, but it doesn't have, it's not 
it's an object it's simply aware until you open your eyes and then you identify with the body which is here you call it my body why you say my body has ever ever anyone questioned that why do you say my body have you ever thought about that my body why do I need to say it why do I need to say my body if I am the body then why am I saying my body in language I mean I say my phone this is a phone I have I say my pen this an object belongs to me but I'm not the pen it just belongs to me and I can change it with a different pen okay I don't like this pen I'm gonna use this pen and if this phone doesn't work then I buy another one because it's my phone so why do you say my body I need to be nice to my body I mean I need to be kind to my body I need to put better food in my body I need to take care of my body as if it's a child or it's a horse you got a horse your horse is in a stable you go visit it and you need to take care of it groom it and wash it and ride it anybody here have an idea hi Brida hello good morning good morning value my body because it supports my spirit uh, yeah the spirit is, is the more eternal of course and the ongoing the before the after timeless but nevertheless it's contained in this life in my body it oh, carries the spirit, right. so i need to nurture and care for it I yeah house. but hold on hold on let me stop you there, right there uh my question is why do you say my body my body it's not your body it's mine okay so so it's then it's an object that belongs to you is that right yes well it's a very personal object it's a very personal object it's specifically made for you but it's still an object yes yes it is. great yes you're referring to an object great thank you thank you we're referring to an object so this is my book am I the book or am I me it's my book I wrote it I published it but am I this book or am I me same thing you say my emotions oh Zarathustra my feelings are so hurt you really you said something or my husband says something or my boss says something at work and my feelings get hurt you again say my feelings my emotions why do you say that why are you referring to your feelings as an object or my mind my mind's driving me crazy Zarathustra can you help me my mind's going crazy I have all these crazy thoughts it's driving me nuts I can't stop my mind I'm constantly thinking so again you are referring to your mind as an object yes it's personalized 
but it's still an object. All of your life we've been doing, all of the life we've been doing that. Unconsciously, we're referring to these three elements, these three phenomena, the body, the mind, and the emotions as an object. What does that indicate to you? If you examine this and you bring your attention to it and objectifyingly look at it, what does this indicate to you? It, it's indicating that you are referring to something belongs to you, but you're not that thing. You are referring to the body, but you're not the body. And it's in your language you're already saying it, but you're not aware of it. Where we are identified with this body as me, as I am identified with my emotions as who I think I am and my thoughts. But down deep, something inside me is very well aware that neither of them is who I am. And therefore, in language, I'm referring to it as an object that belongs to me. So in my depth, in the truth of who I am, I know I'm none of the three. Because if I was, I would have never said my body. I would have never said my mind. I would have never said my emotions. I would say me, I, always. I could not say it any other way. Me body, me mind, me emotion, me feelings. This indicates that something inside you is already free. Something inside you is aware of something that is transitory and comes and goes. Even it's aware of this I. When you say I, where is this I? Where is this I when you say I? Where is it? Can you grab it? I mean, you can grab your body, but where do you grab this I that you've been saying it all your life? This idea of who you are, this me, this I, who's very, very invested, we're so invested in it, and is so concerned about the world events, and it's so concerned about its past, and it's so concerned about what's going to happen in future, and it's so attached to all these different stuff. Where is this I? You can't. Let's find it. Let's grab it. Bring it here. I want to meet this eye. If you disconnect this eye, 
upon closer inspection, I discovered it doesn't exist. It's non-existing. It's only a thought. And this I, this thought of I that I've been associating with it all my life, has no way of knowing itself independently. It can know itself. The only way it's going to know anyone or anything or whatever is it needs to relate itself to something else. Otherwise, it has no existence of its own. It's just non-existing. It doesn't exist. But to create that illusion that it exists, it has to relate itself and connect itself to something else. Otherwise, if you hold it by itself accountable for a while, you do it for a week, a month, two months, six months, one year, two years, you're really adamant to do that and you will, it will dissolve. It will fall back into the source its source that it came from. And you will know for yourself that it's absolutely a non-existing phenomena. It's just a thought. That's all it is. Awareness is here. Awareness has always been here. But it's not personalized. It doesn't belong to anyone. It simply is. And it's simply aware of life in this moment happening. And this person that comes and suffers and is seeking the truth and seeking awakening and is struggling to all these things and doesn't like this and doesn't like that and thinks life is not just and life should be different. Life doesn't know what it's doing. I know better. This one only exists by attaching itself to another object. Otherwise, it's really non-existing. It's just an appearance. It appears and then it connects itself to something and then that's it. I know you're a little bit confused, so let me make it easier. Let me give you an example. Throughout the day, throughout your life, you're continuously saying, for example, I like that tree. You look at a tree and you say, I like that tree. I don't like that car. I don't like this new government. I don't like that person. I like this person. So there's an I that relates itself to something, whether it's li like it or doesn't like it. So it connects itself to another object. So there's a subject and there's an object. And that's how this illusory I, that you believe it's your identity and who you are, that's how it knows itself, by connecting itself to something else. I really don't feel good. I don't really agree. I don't, it just attaches this I that you have grown up all your life with. Only exists based on attaching itself to something else. If you sever the connection, then this idea of you, idea of this I, will fall back into its source. It can't exist simply on its own. Because it's not real. It has no light of itself. So let's say, for example, I'm going to give you a tool of how you deal with this. Is 
you say, I like that tree, okay? So cut, sever the connection between I and the tree. Okay, go ahead, do it right now. Cut that. You cut this part. So I like that tree. So before it says, I like that tree, you cut that. So what happens? It just says, I. Now there's nothing to attach it to. You've cut, you have severed the connection of it because it says, I like that tree. So you cut it right there. So as soon as I comes, you don't even wait for it to say like something, like the tree, you cut it here. So now I rises, I what? It's hanging out there and it falls back. So you see like your mind goes back into silence again. And then you say, I don't really like that teacher or I don't resonate with his teachings anymore. I used to, but I don't. And then just as soon as I comes and cut that connection. And then the rest of the story is not there. And then the eye is like, oh, okay, all right, what am I doing here? And then it has nothing to attach itself. It falls back into silence. Then again, you say, for example, my son is bugging me or is going through problems, you know, again, there's a me, there's a sense of me connecting itself to something, cut that off again, and then the me, the I, is lingering in the air, and then it falls back. You do that long enough, you're going to see that awareness is going to be the only thing it is here. And there is no suffering because the I has to be here to suffer. In the absence of the I or who you think you are, it's only li life. You know, you say, okay, I don't like Donald Trump. I don't like this new, or I don't like Biden. I don't like the Democrats. I don't like this. Look at it again. You're saying this, you're passionate about it. I need to demonstrate. Cut the connection between I and whatever. And then all of a sudden, this I is just like, okay, what am I doing here? It's naked, and all the spotlights is on it. And then doesn't have anything to do and boom falls back goes back to the source it is work of course you have to pay attention to it because it's a lifetime of being conditioned so I don't have a magic pill to give you and you take it and, you know, boom, everything's good. You have to pay attention to it. It's a little bit work, but it's worth it because every time you do it, you go back into silence and you go back to your, I mean, you don't go back. What happens is the idea of you disappears so life is here. It's not even that you go back somewhere. It's just life. Awareness is always here. It's just this illusory person appears in between and thinks, believes that it's doing something, believes that it exists, and that's where you suffer. But in the absence of this thought that I am someone, something, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I am American, I'm Swedish, I'm da-da-da-da. In the absence of this I, 
It's just is. It's just life. It's just, it's always been life in this moment. And this I likes to say, okay, you know, when I get awakened, when I get enlightened, when I get to that place, it's postponing things to another time. Because it wants to survive. It wants to linger on. Because it wants to avoid of what is right now. Because that which you're looking for, you already are. And that which you're looking for, it's here. It's nowhere else. It's just you recognize it. You recognize it that here is the only thing there is, and awareness is the only thing, everything is awareness. And you keep focusing on that long enough, then you will illuminate, you disappear. The idea of you disappears. And when the idea of you disappears, suffering that was happening to the idea of you goes with it. Because that idea of you, that idea of me, the I, is the one who thinks this world is screwed up. And it's not right. It needs to be something else. But life doesn't think that way. Life doesn't care. Life simply is. And it produces the light and the dark. Both of them are aspects of itself. There's nothing, no better or worse to, it, to itself. It creates both. It creates the evil man and the holy man, they're both creations of the same source. It is the same life that creates this beautiful, pristine beach. White sand beach, beautiful palm trees, Gorgeous turquoise water. You can see the fish under the water. It's shanti. It's beautiful. It's breathtaking. And it is the same life that brings a nasty tsunami. And the tsunami comes and destroys this beach. An earthquake happens or whatever and destroys this pristine, beautiful beach and I'm near and I say oh my god what a disaster blah 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 and this should have not happened or it should be different or but life doesn't care it is life is it's always been You are already free, my brothers, sisters. You're already free. You're not in a prison. You're suffering. If you suffer for whatever reason, your desire is not being fulfilled or whatever is happening, it hasn't really happened to you. It happened to the idea of who you think you are. No matter what kind of scars we believe that has marked on us, it 
it can't touch awareness. Awareness is awareness and it's here. I am is I am. It's always here. It's timeless. It's always been here. When you recognize the truth of who you are, you recognize that you've never been born and you're never going to die. It is the appearance of the body, the appearance of a person that appears and then it disappears. It's like a wave coming from the ocean and then it falls back into the ocean. So where did the wave go? The wave is not lost because it was the ocean. It's not a tragedy. It's just the ocean. It appears as a wave or multiple waves or it appears as very calm. But it's the same, same one with different expressions depending on the day. But nothing is lost. It just is. Every single human being you see on this planet is a wave. It's a wave of the same ocean. It's all completely a part of the same ocean. Whether they're bad and evil and dark or they're light, this hand and this hand, they're both parts of the body. Now, I'm worried about this hand attacking this hand and destroys this hand. But it's all the same. It's always been the same. There's never been anything else but that. And never will be anything else but that. which is always here, timelessly. The appearances change. It appears and disappears. It appears, it rises and falls, but it's the same. Same essence, same consciousness, same God, same awareness, same source. You've been drinking the same water that Moses drank four, five thousand, three thousand years ago, four thousand years ago. Same water that Jesus drank, same water that Hitler drank, same water that Napoleon drank, Mother Teresa, Saint Germain. George W. Bush. Saddam Hussein. Same water. There's no new water. The water just didn't get imported. Or we have special imported Evian water from another planet. It's the same water that you've been drinking and it's gone through all these people and now you're drinking it. And then you're peeing it. And then your neighbor drinks it. You've been, you've been breathing the same air as everybody else has been breathing it. There's no brand new air being imported from another place. So when you breathe in and breathe out, breathing and breathe out, and you're in a room with a bunch of people, it's in a way you're making love to them or in a way you have penetrated people around you in the same room and they are penetrated inside you. The molecules of the air, you breathe in and you breathe out, it's the same air somebody else is breathing in and breathing out. So there's an exchange of the molecules of inside you that you're breathing out and someone else is breathing it in so it's all the same. We're beyond connected. 
I mean, we're so connected that we have no idea of how one we are. And then when you die, where do you go? They bury you in the soil. And then the maggots eat your body, and then the frog eats your, the maggot, and then another animal comes and eats the frog, and then we hunt the animal, and then we eat its meat, and you, you eat it, and then you poo-poo it in the ground, and something else eats your poo-poo, and something else eats that, and then and get, it gets constantly recycled. Oh no, I'm so holy. I'm just like a, I'm a descendant from Christ and my shit doesn't stink and I'm better than everybody else. Yeah. I was Nefertiti in past life and Julius Caesar in the other life and I was this really high priest from Egypt and no, I'm I'm better than you. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever talked to people who've done done past life regressions and it's very is like in the new age circle a lot of people say yeah i used to be this high i've seen my past lives and i've been this high priest goddess in egypt and Da, 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 and I've been this amazing, I've been the emperor, I've been this and that. I've never had someone come and tell me I've done my past life regression and I was a prostitute. I was a mean Nazi in Second World War and I was burning Jews. I've never had someone come and say that. Well, then who did it? Because everybody's a high priest in Egypt, or they came from Pallades or whatever, then who was the prostitute? Who was the executioner? Who was torturing people? And who was a drunk or a drug addict? And who was puking all over the place? Who lived that role? I mean, how come I, I don't hear that? Everybody's been like this very special thing. How is that possible? It's all yourself. It's always been yourself because there's nothing else but the one. There's one appears as many. There's only one that appears as billions and billions but behind the mask of that one you pull the you pull the mask off you always see that same face it's the same emptiness it's the same nothingness it's the same silence it's the same awareness that appears in the manifest world, it appears and then it disappears. It appears and disappears, but it's the same one. And down deep, you know it. Of course you know it, because that's who you are. That's why you don't you say my body. You don't say me. Me hurt. Me hurt. Me hurt. You say I have a headache. My arm hurts. I'm hard. You know, my, I'm heartbroken. My heart hurts, or my emotions. You're referring to an object that. The object belongs to you, but you're not the object. You're that which is aware of it. So then why don't we use this information and dive back into the source and kind of weed out what we're not? 
and in that we discover that we are truly free. Freedom is always here. And there is no longer a need to suffer. By simply recognizing the vastness of the presence of this moment that you are, by recognizing it falling back into it, relaxing into it. You relax into yourself. Because in the absence of nervousness, fear, worry, anxiety, in the absence of it, what's there? When you bring your attention on being relaxed, can you not be relaxed when you bring your attention? It's your natural state of just simply being. It's unnatural trying to be something else. It's effort. It's energy consuming when you're stressing or an anxiety or worry it takes a lot of energy. But when you, ch you chill out and you fall back into your natural state, that doesn't require any energy. Some people come and say, I don't know how to relax. I'm so stressed. I don't know how to relax. I mean, it's kind of fashionable to say, oh, I'm so stressed because it's fashionable. But when you're not stressed, what are you? You ever thought about that? When I'm not stressed and I'm not in panic and anxiety, then what am I? Your natural state is presence, it's here. It's aware, but it's not anything. It simply is. It's not identified with anything. It simply is. But the moment we start getting identified to this and that and defining ourselves and connecting this I thought to other stuff, then you get yourself into trouble. Am I making any sense? Does it, does it click, you know? I think because we've been together for nine, yet, nine days and we're building energy and the, the mind's quieting down for everybody and, you know, we're tuning in into this. And so now, if I said this the first day, I, I didn't think it would go in. It would click. But by now there's an openness it's like it's clicking in there's not much of a resistance so it kind of just goes in like oh okay huh just know that every time you're in this relaxed natural state of yourself and you're not engaged with anything, you are in this awakened place that you always wanted to be. And you have an idea of it, of awakening. But it's really your true nature, that's who you are. And I've said it before, the space is the recognition of a space which is here already. It's not something you're going to gain it. Because if you gain it, you can lose it. You just notice it. You just, your attention goes into this place. And then all of a sudden, 
you find that everything is very shanti shanti. And you don't occupy yourself with how things should be or shouldn't be. You're just surrendered. The natural state, it's natural phenomena of surrendering to what is takes place naturally without any effort because it is your true nature. It is who you are. It takes a lot more effort not to be who you are. That's why it's uncomfortable. That's why you suffer. Because it's this old conditioning of continuously, unconsciously trying to be something you're not. Trying to worry and, and stressing and trying to save the world or trying to force things to be differently than your idea. So then it's uncomfortable naturally and everybody else is doing the same thing. And then you get together with your friends and you're all angry at something. And so it's feeding off of itself and it's very uncomfortable. Where in your natural state, you're sitting on the porch, you're watching at the stream, the water's running down, it's nice, beautiful, sunny day. And life is. What do you have to do for that? Because it's the absence of all those other things, then your nat nature's na natural state it reveals itself. It's the absence of the clouds between you and the blue sky. The clouds go away and the sky is always blue. It's not light blue, it's not pink blue, it's just blue, it's always blue, same blue. Never been a different kind of blue. It's always same blue. Do you see how simple it is? It's really simple. The simplicity of it is beyond the imagination. But the average spiritual seeker will come and say, Oh no, but there is more. There, there, no, there has to be something more. N well, I never found anything more. Maybe somebody finds something more. I don't know. I'm going to look at some of our things. Okay, Ingun, let me answer yours and then... Hi, Ingun. I'm... Ingrid, I'm unmuting you. You, you. Can you unmute yourself? Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm not so good in English. Okay. Well, but, uh, I have understand everything you say. What, what is your native language? Uh, Norwegian. We all understand Norwegian. No, Shkir. You can speak in Norwegian. You can say, if you want to say it in Norsk, uh, Hilde, my dear sister, will be kind enough to translate it if that's easier for you. Do you want to do that? Or or you can try to say... I can, uh, tr I can try in the English. Okay. English. Okay. okay. Um, I, I think of a, uh, you say uh, you have to uh, get the proof of everything uh, and uh, 
you have some proof of uh, there only one uh, god there one uh, oneness okay so Okay, let me now read your question. Have you experienced and received proof that there is only one? Uh, yes, there is only one. I can feel itself, it's only one. Because uh, I be happy when I, uh, I am happy, when I can live in the... Uh, but I don't know uh, is about that right or wrong. I know it makes me happy, but uh, uh, I'm not sure if that uh, answer it. Okay, the, in the absence of your mind, it's absence of your thoughts, who are you? If, if all of a sudden you have no thoughts, nothing, there's no thinking, and we're, we disconnect you from your memory, from the past. Let's say there is no past right now, past is gone, and you and I are here and you're alive but you have no thoughts it's quiet and we're not going to the past who are you i'm uh, i feel i'm a uh, oops uh, what is that in english Hold on. It's the observer. Yes. The, uh, the, uh, the observer. Yes. Right. I feel that very strong. Right. I'm, yes. Right. Great. It's the only thing I can yeah. say I uh, know. And yes. yeah, exactly. In the absence of thoughts, because the memory, you go back to your memory, to the past, that's thoughts too. So in the absence of all of thoughts, it's simply you are. You are here, you're the observer, or you are, but you're not anything, you simply are. I feel that. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Because that's the truth of who you are. I'm going to go to Kim. Kim, are you around? Let me see if I find you. There you are. Hi, Kim. Hi, Naya Tustan. Hi. Hi. Do you want to you wanna ask, ask us your question so everybody can hear it? perception has seen our truth and reality or do we all have the same truth that are all that we are all divine beings created by one source with unlimited infinite potential yeah well there is only one truth and there's there's always been one truth so and, and God is the only thing there is. Awareness is the only thing it is. There's nothing else. Okay. You can call it life. You can call it the manifest world. It's that so 
we can say my truth from my perspective and from my limited point of view and whatever my upbringing is and my conditioning is this and then you may say something else but the reality of it is there's only one truth and that's the awareness that's the presence the present moment is always here The present moment is always here. It's never anywhere else. So now you are in this present moment living, living. You can't escape it. You can't escape of, from the present moment because there's nothing else. This is it. But the mind through the I thought would like to go to the memories, its memories, or go to the future and create something which doesn't exist. And as a result of that, question starts to come, questioning it. But when your mind goes into silence, again, in the absence of your mind, who are you? What's here? What's left? So if we take your memory out, and then your mind is quiet, you have no thoughts, then what's left? You will be here because you're not going to die, but you don't have any questions and there's no answers anymore. So you simply are. A part of life with the life surrounding you. You have no thoughts and you're here. There's no questions. So in one summary, is it safe to say that the truth of who you are is just in this present moment? Yes, exactly because there is nothing else. Have you ever experienced life outside of the present moment? Are you ever, ever not able to be aware? Can you be and not be aware? Can you not be aware of the temperature in a room? Can you be not aware of a helicopter hovering over your house? Can you not hear someone is cutting grass with, uh, with this machine and is making a lot of noise? Can you, if your five-year-old is screaming or, or demanding your attention, can you just not be aware of it? If your stomach is hurting or you feel indigestion, you ate something and it's all bloated, can you not be aware of it? It's impossible. Your awareness and awareness is here. There hasn't been a moment in your life that you've been outside of the moment. Maybe in your imagination, you're imagining something. You want to be with someone or somewhere or whatever. You're fantasizing or you're worried about something, but it always happens here. The eternal now. And you are that. That's the good news. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I do have a um, I do have a dilemma. Okay. For the longest time, in what we do for a living, on the first day and throughout the last nine days, you talk about securities and safety. How you know how, that that is the ultimate desire in most people is to obtain security and to be safe and alive. We are in the business, my husband and I are in the business of offering 
investment products for retirement, life insurance, health insurance, and that is all relating to stability, security on the what if, mm -hmm. right. which is opening awareness of, you know, worrying, oh no, what if you die too soon, you, you live too long, uh, then what if you get sick, and we sell on the peace of mind in terms of protecting our assets. How do we go about continuing this, you know, concept of offering security and not worrying on the what if and still be able to help people not instigating fears and worries and live in the present moment? It, it's like a conflict to me in protecting themselves on the what if. Well, number one is know that you're serving God. You're doing what Spirit wants you to do, absolutely. And you're, you're in this apparent world. You're in this phenomena that it's got its own sets of rules and laws. So... You're providing a service. So you're insuring them. They're buying insurance from you to protect their assets. Whether it's life insurance, you're still protecting your assets. So you're providing something which is necessary in, in this lifestyle, in this world we're in. So I don't see anything wrong with it. I don't see like you're doing anything outside of ordinary that it's not ethical or or holy. It's your idea maybe. But you are serving by helping him. Now let's say that a couple, a young couple got married. They have two kids. Husband is 45 years old. Wife is 40 or 35. They have two children. They bought a house for, let's say, $700,000. She's taking care of the kids. That's her job, to raising the kids. And he goes out there and provides and makes money. And they don't have life insurance. So they bought a house for $750,000. They got an expense of like $8,000 a month. And he has no life insurance. And he gets in a car accident, God forbid, and he dies. So what is she going to do? She can't go out there and make $8,000 while she's nursing two kids. Her skill is different. So now she's going to lose her home. And she's going to be on the street. So she needs to be protected. She does need that life insurance till everyone's on their feet or their mortgage is paid. And the kids are in college or they can take care of themselves. In that period of time, they need some kind of security. If something happens to one of the parents, the other one can, has to go on. So you're not doing anything wrong. You're providing a service which is needed. And if you create fear in them, you're, certain, you're definitely bringing their attention to something they're not paying attention to. They're not aware of it. It's like I go buy a $100,000 car and I don't insure it. It's not very smart because it's exposed to all kinds of dangers every day. So I need to protect my investment. Okay? Yes. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. This is what God wants you to do. And you're doing a good job, my sister. You go out there and protect them. Help them understand that they, they need that protection because this is the rules of this dimension. 100 years ago, 200 years ago was different. We lived tribal. We, had our, we lived in a village. It was a tribal lifestyle. 
the village will take care of the kids. There were grandparents, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, everybody was living in a communal life. So if something happened to, to the husband, the rest of the clan were there and they were looking after the kids. They didn't have to mortgage their home. They built their home there and they ate, they lived off of the land. This is different times and requires different ways of living. So you're not doing anything wrong. You're serving. Okay. We got anyone else? Let me see. Let me look at the... Anybody? Okay. Uh, Margie? I'm sorry if I... Sometimes I feel like I don't pronounce your name correctly. You have to give me... Tell me how to pronounce your name correctly one more time and I promise I pay attention. Okay, thank you. It's Marche. Marche. Yes. Okay, I'm going to do my best it to... Looks very well. Okay, Marche. Okay. Right. From Netherlands. From Netherlands? Right. Right. Yes. Echt? Echt? Echt. Echt. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Margie. <laughs> I'm all yours. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, referring to your statements about the, the eye, like the eye light, I don't like the, the eye. Okay. Um, um, uh, how do you come around in daily life? Just talking just in daily life, like, like this or that. It's, it's just my son. Right. I'm what I'm saying is that it's it's a very powerful way of if you're being attentive to this. I'm not saying that every moment in your life you're gonna be saying, I like this, I like that, and then you're just doing this thing. There are moments, of course, you're just going to have to say, hey, you know, I don't like that food or I don't like that this thing. Or your friends say, okay, let's go to this movie. And I say, you know what? I don't like that actor. I don't want to go to that movie. So you're not in your interaction with other people every moment. You're not doing this processing because then it's very uncomfortable. But in your private time, in, in your meditation or even... You, you are doing it on a regular basis. You're watching yourself in language when you're saying to someone, I don't want to go, I don't like that movie. Internally, you know what's up. But you don't need to not speak to someone and say, I don't want to go to that movie because now I need to cut the eye. You're doing it internally on your own time, but when you're in communication and a practical everyday life, you have to speak to other people because that's why we got language. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. So. Beautiful. Just yeah. Be yeah. Just. Yeah. Just be when you're at your own time, then you begin to implement this. And you will see how, if you're adamant and stick to it, not just doing it one or two days and say, okay, I did it for one and two days. But you really stay on it, you will see how that eye keeps falling. Eventually, it gets to a point that the eye disappears. Eventually, if you're really on it, it comes to full illumination. Because the idea of this imaginary me separated from the source that suffers is only a thought. It's not real. And it will disappear. And then in the disappearance of it, the real thing, the real deal 
shows shines itself which is always here
are we doing? You mentioned something, Leslie, uh, do you feel like you asked me? Yeah, you, did you ask me a question? No, not, uh, I was acknowledging uh, Marcia for her question. Okay. Okay. I was okay. appreciating it because after we leave these 
moments of being with you and we go back out into the world like yesterday you were suggested as taking it easy and you know going into nature well i actually had an appointment in new york city and the social security money that was expected to come in didn't come so i was on public transportation okay so i had to and i stayed later in our session i was going to leave a little earlier so i would have enough time to travel but mm -hmm. i was late so i was rushing and <laughs> trying to remember as i was going I mean, and, and and i'm in that practice all the time anyway but i was my body was tired and i was pushing and then i get on the train and it was slow i had to wait for it and then it didn't go all the way to atlantic avenue i'm at the end of the r line out in brooklyn and so we had to take a shuttle bus so i'm on this bus with a lot of people everybody was wearing masks but we weren't six feet apart we were two feet apart so i'm and then it took like an hour and a half and i didn't even get to atlantic avenue before i thought i had to call my and this was my teacher for the first time in energy healing arts who I've been studying with for the last four years, who's brilliant and gifted, and he's like soul family. And it was the first time I was going to work on him. And I had been holding space for him all day in the place of stillness within. So it was an experience yesterday of the logistics of experiencing myself when I'm in those kinds of situations and conditions. And now as I'm, and, and I didn't do as well as maybe I could have. You know, I, I got concerned while I was on the bus. I thought, oh no, you know, like I, this is, and then I thought I was willing to expose myself. And then I realized, but I'm also possibly exposing him. So I called him and said, I think it's not working. This feels forced. I can't, it's going to be another hour, you know, I'm late and blah, blah. So, and he's fine with it because he's already living in this place for himself. Um, and I was looking at, I'm not, fearful of the virus, but I'm also mindful. When I go out into public places, I follow the protocols for my own safety and for others. Because when I'm working, I'm just starting to work again. I do a combination mm -hmm. of massage and energetic healing art. I'm blending um, the cranial sacral that I've been trained in and uh, many, numerous things over the years. And just being present is a big part of it. Um, and I'm just starting to work again. So I'm also mindful that not wanting to um, expose my clients if I should, uh, you know. Okay. So, All right. So, the, so I was appreciating March's um, a question about how to be in the world and just that. So you kind of already answered it. Okay, great. Uh, Good. In numerous ways with some of the few questions that were answered. Yeah, it's great that a lot of the questions are all of our questions and the answers same way. So, yeah, great. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. your practical response to Kim also. I really appreciated that. Like, instead of creating this stress about this transcendent place, you know, that kind of transcends the... Um, the polarities of the world that we live in, the polarities of having self and no self, you know, and it, how to kind of be in the world, but not of the world. That's what Jesus was mentioning, you know, being in the world, but not of the world. And the moments when, like on the bus, I didn't have to be worrying about what was going on. This is where I'm, I'm now looking at, you know, you could have just taken the opportunity you can make a decision whenever you make it, you're going to go or you're not going to go. But in the meantime, you could just simply be present in that place right. of stillness. So I'm just looking at that and how to integrate it deeper. Right. And being present in, in stillness doesn't mean that worry doesn't come. Uh, people think that if you're in this place, that means that you don't worry because you're you're a master you're awakened you're enlightened but that's not true uh worry is a thought it's an emotion it comes and goes so yeah the bo the body can get some people for example like this if they're supposed to be somewhere they have an appointment and they're going to 
you know, let's say they need to be at the airport at 11 o'clock in the morning. And it's just the nature that they get so stressed uh, and they need to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. They need to be there three hours ahead of time. Even though they don't, they're not required to be there for an hour before the flight or two hours before the flight, depending if it's an international flight or domestic, but they just have to be there a few hours ahead of time and then they can relax into it. And it has nothing to do with awakening or not. You can be awakened and stressed. Stress is something happens to the mind and the body and that's fine too it happens if you you know you're late you're supposed to be somewhere and you're late for whatever reason and not stress happens and you're aware of stress the awareness remains the awareness. The awareness is aware of stress happening. The awareness is aware that things are calm and quiet. The awareness remains the awareness. Regardless of what appears and what disappears. Being awake or being in this place of total stillness and silence does not mean you are not aware of things rising and falling and they shouldn't rise I should never get angry because I'm awake someone is being an idiot and they turn in front of you with their car and they do something stupid they almost killed you and you get angry and you yell at them that doesn't mean you're not aware it's just you're reacting you're responding in the moment to what is happening And back to Kim, uh, are you still there, Kim? Yes, I'm yeah. here. You know, I was in insurance industry for 20 years. I don't know if you knew it or not. Yes, I remember you yeah. at the company at Yeah, so, and the, the third time I got into insurance industry, which I had moved to Sedona, Arizona, and that was the third time because I, I went into that industry three times. And the third time I was there, uh, I recall I would go on these appointments. We, we, I, I was doing life insurance in the beginning and then I moved to group health insurance, which I liked it a lot more because then I was able to work during the week, during the day. And then by evening time I was done and I didn't have to see clients on the weekend. So I liked that much better than selling life insurance that you, I was dealing with individuals and I had to see them in the evening time or on a weekend, which I didn't like that. So I remember I was living in Sedona, Arizona. It's a rural area and you, you're not going to make a living if you're just fixed on selling group health insurance locally you have to get out of your area and for me it was I mean I like to drive especially in the nature so and my partner at the time he didn't like driving he enjoyed staying in the office and doing administrative work and I hated doing administrative work I wanted to be on the field so what happened was some of these appointments that we had were from one hour to four hour drive. And for me, it was pure meditation. And sometimes, I mean, four hours is very far. I think it has to be a worthy appointment to go that far. But, and 
possibly multiple appointments in the same area rather than just going to see one client. But it was very common I would drive for two hours to get to somewhere, one and a half hour, two hours. But for me, it was like pure meditation. It was never an effort because I would just drive my car. A lot of times I wouldn't even make phone calls unless I had to. And, and quite often I wasn't even listening to music. And I would go into this deep, silent place and I'm driving in uh, Arizona, which is beautiful, and it's just breathtaking, that part of Arizona uh, around Sedona and the vicinity. And the landscape is breathtaking. And I'm just completely immersed into the land, the scenery, driving, driving the car, and I'm in this really deep, silent place. And I wouldn't know how like three hours went by. Sometimes I just, I would arrive at the place and three hours had gone by. Then I go to my appointment and I never th thought that I'm going there to sell something. It was like, God wants me to be here. I'm serving God and I'm going to provide service. And I will go to this appointment from this place of two hours, three hours of being still and silent. Now imagine you enter into this appointment with that presence. And it, it would work very well for me. People would just immediately, because you're in total stillness within yourself, even though you had been driving for three hours or two hours, and you're sweaty, you're tired, or whatever, you know, you have to go shake it off. But you enter to this appointment from that space of stillness and presence. It would immediately put my client at ease. And they would immediately fall back into this place of being very comfortable and feeling very safe. So what I'm referring to, uh, Kim, is something that to the common spiritual seekers may not be holy, but everything is holy. God is in everything. Consciousness is everywhere. And it doesn't matter what you do for a living. As long as your heart is into it and and you're serving your heart, you feel like that's right, whatever, whatever you're doing in your life, it's, it's fine. We have this idea, like I had this idea, like, okay, I've gone through this phase too. Like, in the past, before I, I did the, the third time, uh, selling insurance in Sedona. Prior to that, I used to think like, uh, because I'm not a healer or I'm not a teacher or I'm not doing anything in, the, in this industry, then that's not holy. But then I realized that it's all holy. What, what I, I think what, what, hap what has been happening to me for the last five years as I walk this pure spiritual path is that um, I myself trying to detach from fear, worries, concern, and the what if of the future, you know, trying to live in the present moment. And here I am making a living out of offering that. What if you die too soon, live, you know, too long. And right. Too long, you sick. Yeah. Well, the what if, what if, what if they die early, then what happens to the kids? I mean, people die early. It, it's a na it, it is a na you're bringing their awareness to a possibility of life by ensuring themselves and ensuring their family to protect their assets, and that's that's the deal in this dimension you're living in right now. that in 
interest. Well, we well, that's that's a different story. It's you know maybe your time's coming to an end, and and existence has other plans for you. So then it will present itself. But what you do, or let's say you're a truck driver, let's say you're a janitor in a university. There is no, it's not unholy, or what I do as a spiritual teacher is more holy than a janitor does. It's the same. None of it is better than the other. It's all serving God. Because God is in everything and everywhere. Once we begin to see it, that it's all that. It's one appears as many. One is doing what it's doing in these different forms. And this is the expression of it. Then that judgment goes away. The mind creates that judgment. Now, if it's not in your path to sell to, to, to be in insurance industry and to be a healer or shaman or spiritual teacher or go open up a spiritual bookstore or center or whatever that your heart desires, a restaurant, that will happen. It will happen on its own accord. If it's a part of your destiny, it will reveal itself. It will, it will go in that direction. But none of it is more holy than the other one. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Thank Just you. trust. Trust your, your, trust your intuition. Trust life. That that which... Just know that by just being here, by coming on this path that you have a commitment to the truth, you have a commitment to, to love, and love will guide you home. And in the meantime, you have to do what you have to do to support your family and serve your community, whatever that is. A truck driver is serving, is, is driving, carrying, material from one area to another area. Without our respected truck drivers, we wouldn't have food in our supermarkets. We wouldn't have supplies in our hardware stores, in our hospitals. Somebody has to deliver that. Somebody has to do that work. So they're just as worthy as someone who's preaching the words of God. They're serving. Okay. Oh my God, it's 11.57. What happened? It just, time flew. Hi, Michelle. Have we spoken before? You seem like, no. no is, is this your first time that you've joined us? Yes. Yeah. My very, very first time. Okay. But, um, we have a mutual friend. And um, he invited me to this. Evan? Evan? Evan from Heaven? Yeah, he plays the didgeridoo. Yeah, e so, Evan Perman. Yes, so that's why I'm here. Are you in Sedona? Is that where you're residing? Um, I just moved to Knoxville, North Carolina. Uh, excuse me, Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay, okay. Because Evan is visiting Sedona right now. I thought maybe that's how... He mentioned this. I, yeah. I just knew I was supposed to be here. And I arrived later, just three days ago. But I dreamt about it, which was really interesting. But it's also what I wanted and needed for my own experience as well. Oh. As, um, I figured out how to be on video because today I needed to be physical with everyone to connect. Wonderful. But yesterday... Yesterday, I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> right. I get it. I'm not, I'm not very technical. Thank God to Mr. Amir, my office manager and my savior that does everything. But yeah, I'm, I have a hard time with these kind of applications. Yes. And I like that I, we're, we're matching today. So oh, yeah. The memo. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 
I, I didn't notice your black and white till you mentioned it. Yeah. Your dots will fit in. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, welcome, and we do our academy, which is similar to this, every Wednesday, so you're always welcome to join in. Thank you. Yeah, you just have to, is there a different registration for the academy than here? Yes. Yeah, you just have to go back to our website and re-register through the academy, and then we'll send you the link and the password. Thank you Yeah, so you're much. welcome. You're welcome. I'm so grateful for you, you being present with everyone and inspiring and encouraging us. Well, thank you. We're grateful that you're here with us. <laughs> okay, so, my God, I, I didn't realize. At one point, I look at the time, and it was like 11.30, and then the next thing I look at it is almost 12. So... Um, <laughs> we are going to meet on, hi, Amy, are you calling me? Yeah, yeah, were you, were you pointing out to me, Miss Amy? Yes, yeah, um, yeah, I had a question. Okay. Sorry, I know you're wrapping up. Okay. Um, I just saw, uh, I, I was listening to everyone and um, I'm realizing there's like um, this, you know, awareness of continuing this. And I had like a strong intuition to uh, continue on this journey. And I know you have the academy, but I, I wanted to, to ask, and sorry if it's, it's at the wrong time, but um, I know we're closing up. Um, if you had any like what what is the best way to continue on this journey i know you talked about uh the the coaching the one-on-one -on -one coaching and i felt like very connected with that and i feel like i wanted to uh continue on that journey right. and um, my intuition pulls me to that so i wanted to, to ask if, if you can go a little bit more into into that yeah absolutely um the uh, that's the life training program is the one-on-one -on -one tailor-made uh, life coaching program that I uh, created this year and uh, I started admitting uh, participants in April of 2020 and uh, it's something that was on the back of my mind and I wanted to do it but I wasn't able to do it because for the past 10 years I've been going back and forth between Los, uh, the US and Europe uh, and then it intensified, so I started going three times a year. So it just was something I wasn't able to do. I couldn't handle being uh, committed to having students and work with them for three to five months regularly while I was traveling, doing my foreign travel. So I could never manifest and do it till the pandemic happened. And... Uh, when the pandemic happened and I was grounded like everybody else, it was like, okay, now this is an opportunity to provide a number of different things. Uh, I can intensify the academy. I can offer workshops and retreats. Um, I can offer free events like we're doing, and I can have paid events. But it was something I wanted to do for a long time to provide free content and connect but in the meantime you have to make a living to get this wheel running and be able to produce quality videos podcast service so you you have to figure out a way of okay how can i serve but in the meantime you have one foot on on the ground and one foot in the heaven and you have to deal with life and the expenses of life. So the, the life training program came and it was like, okay, now I can offer this to those who are really committed. They're set. They're very close to this transition of awakening. Uh, now, different people participate for different reasons, but generally that was my idea 
that I can create a platform, I can create this particular program because I know of being on that side of my own hangups and the areas that I couldn't get over and I needed someone badly to work with me and I think I would have made it the years before if I had that but I didn't have it. I didn't have that kind of support and also internet wasn't as widely available and we didn't have Zoom. So now the setting is perfect and by designing this program it was like okay it's going to be a tailor-made program for those seekers of the truth that I can meet with them once a week I can give them their specific homeworks and step by step lead them to self-realization or towards the goal that they're they're coming to me or whatever that is but in that path of coming to self-realization or whatever their goal is they're going to discover something very valuable within themselves because the teaching is coming from bringing you the attention to silence and going beyond the mind and basically diving into the presence but we somehow have to weed it out. We got to get rid of all these other stuff that first is in the front, whether it's childhood abandonments, there's any kind of like sexual traumas or whatever trauma that has happened, which has pretty much happened to a lot of us, with obscuring our vision of simply being in the presence of simply being in this natural state of ourselves because of the story that the mind's got. So it was like, okay, this is going to give me a chance because I have this person under my care from three months to five months. And so it was very excited to see, okay, what what kind of results am I going to get out of this? Another thing was that we do workshops for two days or three days, or I've done retreats in, in uh, different kind of parts of the world, but there's a time limitation to it. And the longest retreat we did was in uh, uh, Sweden, which was 11 days. But having someone under my care from three to five or six months is a different story. That was something I've never done. I had done something similar to it, but it wasn't like this. So that's how I uh, and why I created the life training program. And it's been extremely successful so far, thank God. Uh, thank you to my participants and existence that has provided this and makes it possible. Did I answer yeah. your question? Yeah? Yeah, no, I was, I was really curious about it and um, I know you, you mentioned that you had like a limited number and uh, we can talk about this later, but do you still have any openings? I, I still, yeah, my intention was that I will open this platform for this season because I have some of my uh, other students that I'm still working with and uh, and it was like okay how many people can I really handle comfortably at it and it was like okay I can deal with six people I can work with six people and give them attention and uh, four people have signed up so I have room for two more people maybe I can push it to one more but that's it. With respect of the other people who are finishing their program at this point, that's as much as I can handle. Maybe one. I, I can take, I can take, I can comfortably admit two more people right now. So, and then I can handle that. So, uh, but we can talk if you like afterwards.
and then I'm, I'll make an appointment and we talk about it and then I'll let you know how it works and what we're doing, what's expected, what you can expect from me and uh, what sort of practices you're going to be doing and so on. It's fun. I try to make it fun and be flexible with it so it's not regimented and uh, because I like to have fun myself so <laughs> and be playful about things. So, do you have any requirements for, for if you're signing up? Is there any requirements that you think that we should be prepared for to sign up for this? No, because we do we do talk about what is it that you want to accomplish, basically, and you know, different people have different different uh, goals. Uh, sometimes people have physical issues, or it's uh, but majority of people I encounter, they're looking for freedom. I mean, it's possible someone comes to me and says, okay, I want to find my, my soulmate. Or, and that's my main goal. But uh, it doesn't matter whatever is the main goal is because the principle of it is the same. So I would make adjustments for them. Uh, but I don't always work with this with people the same way. Some people may need to go. Maybe I do have to do some hypnotherapy and go back into their early stages of their birth. Maybe I have to take him to a past life. Uh, maybe we have to deal with some traumas. They've been raped or beaten up or abandoned. So I need to clear that part up first before I can introduce them to a higher level of consciousness somebody's very advanced and they don't need those things and then boom we can get into the more advanced areas uh, somebody may have a very busy mind so i have to spend quite a bit time to really mellow down the mind because there are times that people want to get it with their mind they want to understand and there's a lot of mindy questions about the nature of existence, about God. So where do we go after we get enlightened? Or where do we go after this life? So the mind is asking a lot of questions. But the mind can't understand these things. So I have to work with them to really quiet their mind. And then the gateway opens up. So it requires skill and mastery. Because not everybody's needs are the same. So, and then I, there's, there's a lot. It's, it is, it, it, it is uh, interesting. It's wonderful. It's a process that I enjoy, that I really love to, to the transformation that I'm observing happening to the person. And I get a lot of joy out of it. And, you know, sometimes physically I get tired, but there's rewards in it, definitely. And the rewards is not monetary, it's not financial. The, the seeing someone liberating is, that rewards is beyond anything. Priceless. Priceless. It's absolutely priceless. All right. Did I answer all of your questions? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it is definitely my signature program. And it's, it's like deadly. I mean, it hits the point. So uh, if you can afford it, you can commit yourself to it. Uh, this is the time. That's definitely the time. Because I don't know if I'm going to be around next year or if I can offer it next year. Who knows what's going to happen next year? Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know about that. But it's happening right now and, and the gate, gateway has opened up. So if you can dance with me, come on in. We'll go for a ride together. Um, a couple other announcements is that we do have... Um, 
a shamanic healing circle that's it's a two-hour event we've done it a few times before it's online uh, it's powerful those who've done it they feel it they know its power uh, followed by a three-day workshop which is the uh, self-awakening mastery workshop and that in this this particular workshop I've designed it in a way to give you the tools that how you can very quickly raise your vibrations to a higher frequency and the know-how of how you can separate yourself from the mind, the emotions, and the body and become a complete observer of it. So you're not connected to and or identified, that's a better word to say, to all these fear, worry, anxiety, these emotional ups and downs that A, is being provided by the media and we're bombarded by the society. Uh, B, is to find this place within ourselves. Of, so it becomes the focal point of our attention which sometimes, or a lot of times, just words and pointing out to that place is not enough. We need other tools to be able to get to that place. So there would be a, a, a active meditations in it and guidance and teachings. So mastering the mind to become the master of the mind so we're not a slave of it and we're not buying into this mind so it's going to be a powerful transforming workshop and if your heart desires i encourage you to jump in and join in you will receive uh, very powerful tools and instructions but of course like anything in life you have to uh, apply them to your daily life. You have to, you need to do the work. I can show you the know-how, but you're the one who's going to have to do the work. In addition to that, uh, the last thing, I mean, it reminds me, don't forget, we're, thank you very much for your generous donations. Uh, really appreciate it. It's very kind of you. I thank you for that. We are a small venture, and uh, this retreat uh, comes from the bottom of my heart and we decided to make it a free retreat and also if you feel like donating there's a donation box on my website and and if you want to help go ahead and donate we appreciate it other than that my email is info at zaratustra.tv and feel free to write to us. And my website is zaratustra.tv. And all of our pages, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, podcast, uh, Instagram, and podcast is zaratustra5d. That's my address. We continuously... Uh, upload our podcast with new broadcasts as well as uh, upload new videos on YouTube so if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe if you feel like sharing your feelings your thoughts about this retreat you're welcome to uh, send me an email and That way we can connect. So people used to write to me on my uh, Fifth Dimensional Quantum Awareness page on Facebook. And uh, we uh, have an automatic response uh, responser to that to direct them to write an email to us. Because it got to a point it was very difficult to manage everything. And I couldn't, we couldn't get back to uh, our audience. So email is one of the best ways to contact me.
Many blessings to all of you all over the world. Thank you for being with me and your support and your love. I hear it. I feel it. Um, I do read all of the emails. I do get the messages on Facebook. I try to check everything out as much as I can. And sometimes I may not respond right away, but I try to get back to you. So I appreciate your support. Sending you my love. Stay in your heart. Stay in your center. Know that all is well. All is well in the center of yourself, in the present moment of the being. There's nothing absolutely wrong. Whatever is happening in the world is the will of God. All of it is exactly the way it needs to be. We just need to stay in our own center and just remain the observer of what appears and what disappears. If you simply keep your attention on this point and be quiet, you will see yourself that you are free from this cycle of life and death and the drama of life. Don't ever betray your commi commitment to love. Never. You carry the torch of love by being born on this planet. Love is your power. Love is your true nature. And sometimes it's difficult to be in that place because the busy mind obscure your connection and your knowing. So it clouds your judgment. But in the absence of the busy mind, when the mind becomes silent, true love appears. And that's your power. And the more you become aware of it and you dive into your true nature, which is love, the less fear rules. And you live a happy and vibrant life. as well as your true purpose will reveal itself to you. You will find your way and your mission on this planet, uh, why you're here and what is it you need to do. Everything will reveal itself. Once you're present, you're here, and you're not operating from the mind, everything else will show itself to you. Love you. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Namaste.